Thank you. I'm not here to um, make friends this morning. Uh, the reason for that is that um, I, I, I'm going to sort of push the, push the edge a little bit because, you know, one of the definitions of coaching is about uh, getting people to think for themselves. Learning takes place on the edge. Um, when you're well within in, in your comfort zone, you're not necessarily learning much. Um, when you go too far over the comfort zone, you go and sort of panic and uh, the awareness goes down. And the other thing, of course, is that uh, you'll well know as a coach that, um, that all the answers are within yourself. So I'm not coming up with any answers here. What I'm, what I'm trying to do is to provoke the, the thinking, and I trust absolutely that the answers are all within you. Unless we change direction, we are liable to end up where we're headed, and I think you have your own ideas where we are headed, depending on how much you, you have uh, sort of studied the current situation. There's another expression that I um, um, uh, heard recently, which uh, said, all we have to do to ensure the, essentially, extinction of all life on this planet is to do nothing. It's all we have to do. We live in a, in a world that uh, you call it capitalism or call it consumerism, whichever you like, but um, it's, it's, it's dependent upon that. I mean, capitalism is based on consumerism. If you want to uh, grow the economy or whatever it is, you've got to sell stuff. I mean, George Bush said after 9-11, the best thing you can do to save America is buy more stuff. Not perhaps the cleverest thing to say just after 9-11, but that's what he said anyway. This was his solution. The idea of the economy shrinking, you know, we're in a recession. My God, this is terrible. Um, is it? <laughs> is it not the best possible thing that could happen is that we buy less stuff? Yeah? So what we have is an economic system that encourages us to buy more, pollute more, get more, and all that sort of stuff, and we have a situation on the planet itself that we have to reduce our consumption and our emissions by about 80% within the next 30 years. 80% reduction. So how can these two things fit together? The answer is they don't. It's as simple as that. They don't, and one of them has to change dramatically. Really dramatically, one of them has to change. And guess what? It's capitalism that has to change. These two things are completely incompatible. What would you do differently in your role as a corporate leader, in your company, in your organization? What would you do differently about your family if this was true? And that provokes an amazing amount of thought for people. Humankind had always lived on its income, which is sort of the normal thing to do, isn't it? Makes sense to live on your income, not beyond your income. And so what essentially we had done um, for forever was to live on what we had, what we grew. First of all, what grew naturally, and then we learned a little bit about agriculture, and therefore we could grow a little bit more produce, and so we, we ate better, and so on and so forth. But we were very much dependent on what was available at the time in terms of, 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 of plants and, and, and animals that we used for food, and so on and so forth. Imagine if you were a family and you had lived on your income for many, many generations that lived on their income. And then one of the family suddenly decided, hey, you know that nest egg we've got for the family in case of a bad day? Let's raid the bank and take the nest egg out. And that nest egg was supplied by the sun. Millions and millions of years of the sun provided us with oil and coal. And that is stored in the bank. And we suddenly decided, let's raid the bank. And what happened when we raided the bank with the Industrial Revolution is everything went completely out of balance. Everything went crazy on the graphs. We had this extraordinarily 
idea growing out of that, that we could engineer in the in early stages, we could engi engineer our way to utopia. And that led to cars and airplanes and, and so on and so forth. And now we're in that electronic, uh, sudden sort of technological advance again, rushing forward here. And the idea was, the idea has been ever since those days that our technology will take us to utopia. And that's how we've seen it. And this is madness. So we are grossly irresponsible and have been for 200 years in, in our production. We have not had the wisdom to say, if we are going to increase production, how do we use this in a responsible way? That has been forgotten. So what we have now is a huge amount of knowledge and a complete failure of wisdom in our society. Instead of 80% of the technology budget going into the military, which it does, to make weapons to kill people better, if that was used for our education, for supplying the needs of humanity for clean water and health care and all that sort of thing, we'd be in a completely different world. We have a fundamental crisis in the whole of our society globally that has to be addressed. And engaging ourselves in corporate social responsibility is a way of waking people up. But that ain't going to fix it. Since time immemorial, the structure of our societies, except I would say there's some indigenous societies which were much more, shall we say, egalitarian, but in our um, main societies in our world, as far as we know, the, 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 there has been a very much of a hierarchy, and whether it's been emperors or presidents or generals or uh, cardinals or popes, or in, in, all those, in all those sectors, it's been a hierarchical system. When you submit to a hierarchy, um, it, it's, it's quite a primitive state, shall we put it that way. Now, if we look at evolution, let me give you a very simple model of evolution, the simplest models or sort of three-stage model. Uh, going from dependence, first of all, that's the lowest stage, dependence and then independence and then interdependence, the three sort of stages of evolution. That takes place collectively as well as individually. So at, at a certain stage in our lives, we're dependent. We're dependent. We like to be told what to do, and our parents tell us what to do, and our school teachers tell us what to do, and all that sort of thing. And then we begin to break away from that dependence, to rebel against that, and, and seek our independence. And, and then, finally, we mature beyond our independence, which is rather an unattractive stage in some ways. And then we mature beyond that and begin to uh, recognize the interconnectedness that we all have. Okay. So um, what has happened is, historically, humanity as a whole has been in this dependent state, very much dependent on the hierarchy, and increasingly, and particularly in recent uh, decades, we've been rebelling against that dependence. And various things are happening that are pretty obvious, and that is there is a decline in leadership. There's a decline in the respect for leadership.